What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this week, the on-chain newsletter from Glassnode Insight. It is week 25, and before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notification so you know when the next video is up so you can catch up with this week's uh, online uh, analysis or on-chain analysis. Uh, also, like, dislike, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm happy to hear what you gotta say. And also, go check out my socials. There, There's really some cool things that are pushing the envelope. Uh, one, just, you know, the normals like Instagram and Twitter, but then we got Twitch, okay? Go really, really look into Twitch and Odyssey. Both of these are fantastic, of course. Follow me here, like you already are. And uh, I found a new uh, listening platform called Fountain.fm, and you can earn Bitcoin while listening to your favorite podcasts. The link is down in the description. Go check it out. It's really cool, absolutely free. And you might find some of the, uh, you can import the playlist or podcast that you are already following on a few other uh, systems like Spotify. And you can see if any of those have uh, the ability to earn some free Bitcoin while you're listening. It's really cool. So without any further, let's get into it. Falling dominoes, capitulation across the board. The Bitcoin market has reeled from a massive deleveraging event this week, falling below the 2017 $20,000 all-time high. Both on-chain DeFi markets and off-chain entities deleveraged as exchanges, lenders, and hedge funds were rendered insolvent, illiquid, or liquidated. <clears throat> The Bitcoin market has reeled from a massive deleveraging event this week, both in its on-chain DeFi markets and off-chain as exchanges, lenders, and hedge funds being rendered insolvent, illiquid, or liquidated. The market sold off below 20,017 all-time high on June 18th, reaching a truly remarkable, remarkable low of 17,708. Prices did, however, recover the $20,000 level on Sunday. With Bitcoin and digital assets being the only tradable instruments over the weekend, macro fears and demand for the dollar liquidity appeared to have taken out of, been have been taken out of the space. As a result of this extreme deleveraging event, we have started to see signals of capitulation across a number of entities, including miners, long-term holders, and the aggregate market. In this edition, we'll explore the various sectors to assess whether maximum pain has been reached or not. <clears throat> Rock bottom profitability. With the market trading below $20,000, uh, the investor conviction and market profitability have been put to an extreme test. The realized loss metric measures the total value delta between coins that were acquired at higher prices and the price when they were subsequently spent on chain. Realized losses reached a new all time high, punctuated by three consecutive days with market-wide realized losses above 2.4 billion a day, totaling 7.325 billion. The profitability stress noted above appears to be playing out in investor actualizing the losses, investors actualizing the losses. We can, all, we can also investigate the profitability of specific investor cohorts relative to their realized price which is the average price of all coins based on when, on when they last moved on chain. The chart below presents the MVRV ratios for three Bitcoin cohorts, the whole market, short-term holders, long-term holders, which shows that all of them are now at loss, at a loss and holding coins below their cost bases on average. Previous, in, previous instances where all three cohorts were are at unrealized losses of coincided only with the late stage bear market capitulations, providing confluence with the above, above profitability metrics. As we covered two weeks ago in week 23, a powerful tool for tracking bear market extension is the diminishing profitability across supply and wallet based metrics. We, what we're seeing are thresholds of ultimate investor financial pain, which exhausted sellers in previous cycles. The, 
These maximum pain thresholds in supply can be investigated from different dimensions. There's the supply and profit, which dropped to just 49% as the market traded down to $17.6,000, putting more than half of the supply into the unrealized loss. Historical bear market floors have bottomed between 40% and 45% of supply and profit. So that's over. Addresses and profit. <clears throat> assesses the profitability among individual wallets and returns similar results to supply and profit. This metric is now just 10% higher than its lowest level in the 2018-19 bear market and the COVID crash, indicating just marginally less pain than at those bottoms. UXTOs in profit enables us to gauge the market profitability based on all unspent outputs. This metric shows that 26.7% of all unspent transactions, which are the US, US, UTXOs, are in loss. Historically, at the bottom of the bear market, 50.2% to 81.1% of all UXTOs were in loss. The long-term holder supply and profit. Monitors the profitability of long-term holders as a gauge of the severity of stress on Bitcoin's strongest handed investors. At the moment, 35% of long-term holders' supply is at loss. This means this cohort is still shouldering less pain compared to past bear markets, where long-term holders held 42% to 51% of their supply loss in the loss. There is an expected natural drift in the floor of these metrics as coins are lost and deep hodled, deeply hodled over time. As such, the sell-off over the weekend can be considered to have plunged profitability and investors to a historically meaningful degree of financial pain. Minor capitulation happening in real time. A strong case can be made for Bitcoin to be considered a digital commodity, and like many commodities, it tends to have a relationship with its cost production. By running a log, a log log regression, I think that just meant log regression, model between difficulty and market cap, we can estimate an all in sustaining cost for mine BTC. This cost of the production model is currently trading at 17,600, which interestingly was the price low over the weekend. That's interesting. The investigation on week uh, 23 uncovered the stress on miners' income due to falling revenues and rising cost productions. Minor behaviors now confirm that an ongoing minor capitulation phase is underway. The first piece of evidence is the hash ribbons, which have now inverted as hash rates fall 10% off the all-time highs and signifies that mining ASICs rigs are coming offline. We can further validate that miner stress is in play using two tools, the Puel multiple, which is an oscillator tracking minor USD denominated income and currently indicates that aggregate revenues are 61% lower than their yearly average. From declining minor revenues, we can imply that minor stress is likely. The difficulty ribbon compression, which is normalized, then provides an explicit minor stress model, which like the hash ribbons, monitors whether rigs are actually coming offline. Given that we saw a recent uptrend in difficulty, we can also ascertain that the cost of production for BTC has increased. Based on these two models, the ongoing miner income contraction is worse than the Great Migration in May through July of 2021. However, miners have faced worse days in 2018-19 and 14-15 and bear markets where the pool multiple reached 0.31, which is 69% revenue decline versus yearly average. To assess the probability of minor capitulation, we can combine these two metrics seeking confluence between a pool multiple of less than 0.6 and a difficulty ribbon compression of less than 0.06, distilled into the minor capitulation tool shown in the yellow zones below, further, multi uh, fur thir further bolstering this argument, we can also estimate the realized price for miners, excluding the Potoshi coins. I think that meant Satoshi coins. <laughs> Uh, as a gauge for their mind balance cost bases currently at 26,170. Interestingly, on, a multiple, on multiple occasions, the highlighted capitulation zones overlapped with the periods when the market price has been traded below the estimated realized price for miners. Over the recent market crash to 17,600, this overlapping structure is noticed for the first time since the COVID crash. 
With this extensive financial pressure on miners, outflow volumes from their treasuries reach rates between 5,000 and 8,000 BTC per month. This is now comparable with the 2018-19 bear market capitulation event. Remarkably, after Bitcoin failed to hold its ongoing consolidations low band of 28,000, miners stopped spending and actually saw balances increase at a rate of 2.2 uh, 2,000 to 100 bitcoins per month. Long-term holders on the verge of capitulation. The falling dominoes of the current bear market are advancing to a new phase. Alongside, alongside miners, you got long-term holders are now beginning to feel the pressure, forcing many of them to sell at an accelerating rate. Long-term holder supply has de uh, declined by 178,000 BTC over the last week equivalent to 1.31% of their total holdings. Revive supply one year plus confirms that spending by older coins it is taking place, accelerating to rates of 20,000 to 36,000 BTC per day. This reflects an influx of fear and panic with even Bitcoin's strongest hand, stronger ham cohorts. We can map the motivating financial stress on long-term holders using the LTH MVRV, a ratio between market price and the long-term holder realized price. The recent market crash uh, to 17,600 pushed this metric to 0.85, meaning long-term holders on average are holding 15% unrealized loss. This is a deeper low than was, than was set during the COVID crash and just likely above the 2018-19 bear, uh, bear market capitulation bottom. That's pretty fantastic. As long-term holders unrealized losses amplify, and the intensity of this selling and loss can be monitored by LTH SOPR, this metric compares the market price with the cost basis of the long-term holder spending coins each day. Past capitulations of long-term holders have occurred when this metric trades below one, signifying that long-term holders are taking losses after long holding periods. At bear market lows, this metric has previously fallen to, fallen to the 0.4 to 0.6 range, indicating that 40% to 60% losses. Thus, the current spending behavior by long-term holders taking losses coincides with March 2020, but is not quite as severe as the 2018 or 2018 market lows. We can also track the net coin distribution of long-term holders over a 30-day period to assess relative sell-side activity. Here, we normalize values by total long-term holder supply to gain a comparative overview of these investors' behaviors across previous bear markets. During the recent sharp drop, long-term holder investors have spent slightly more than 1% of their supply per month at a rate that, coincide, that, that co is coincident with the COVID crash and the post all-time high correction in December of 2021. This level is almost two times higher than the 2018, 19, 18 and 19 bear market maximum outflow. Note, the maximum long-term holder outflows are actually associated with bull markets taking profits rather than bear markets bear markets, experienced investors panicking and taking losses. Tracing pain into the exchange. <clears throat> Exchanges remain the primary trading venue for Bitcoin and thus characterizing the incoming flow, coin flows can refine our observations of the market response to volatility and drawdowns. The following figure shows only instances where the weekly net flow to red from green exchanges surpasses 1% of the total exchange balances. Reviewing the recent notable incidents, from here's the 2018-19 bear market saw a regime of weekly inflows greater than 1% of the total exchange balance persistent over one month. The Luna crash reached 4% of the total exchange balance in net inflows. And the current market has this metric uh, returning a negative 2.8% net outflow, which is similar to the post-COVID crash outflows. As such, despite heavy downside price action, exchange balances saw a net balance depletion at a rate of 2.8% of, of the total this week. Next, we can characterize the profitability of inflows to exchanges by the degree of profit and realized loss. Exchange inflows over the last month have been dominated by realized losses, 
with the total magnitude surpassing 1.5% of the market cap. This exceeds the May-July 21 sell-off, however, is around half as severe as the extreme lows in the 1819 bear market and COVID crash of 2020. <clears throat> In conclusion, the Bitcoin market has now experienced two distinct capitulation phases since the all-time high in November of 2021. The first phase was triggered by the Luna Foundation Guard Force selling its 80,000 plus Bitcoin, and the second one this week via massive industry-wide deleveraging both on and off-chain. Miners are now under significant financial stress, with BTC trading near the estimated cost of production, incomes well below their yearly average and hash rate noticeably coming off all-time highs. The aggregate market has realized over $7 billion in losses this week, with the long-term holders contributing some 178,000 BTC in additional sell side. As we have discussed in recent weeks, the last two, 23 and 24, Bitcoin market participants across the board are at or very near historically high financial pain thresholds. With four sellers appearing to drive much of the recent sell site, the market might begin to eye whether signals of seller exhaustion are emerging or the coming weeks and months. <clears throat> so we will see. This is, will the miners, will the price stay higher than the miners? And if it does, is it gonna shake just a few out in a short period of time? We shall see. Let me know in the comments what you think, again, Go check out some of these uh, these new things down the uh, the description. Fountain FM, really really cool. Get your free Bitcoin, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace.